Welcome back to the Dusty Tome. So it seems you've all been enjoying the work of Stephen Sinclair. So we got together again for this episode to bring you another one. On our last collaboration, we kicked off his Express Horror Collection, some short length weird fiction snacks that you can slip in at any time of the day. Now we bring you the second story from this new collection, a wild sci-fi fantasy blend called Colonialism. We hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you on the other side. Colonialism by Stephen Sinclair from the Express Horror Collection. The alien creature had trapped Commander Jim in this small storage chamber at the rear of the ship. All the rest of the crew, all 20, all female, gorgeous and at least 20 years younger than Jim and also his trad wives were dead. The creature had killed them in ways Jim couldn't believe had happened. Two of them had just burst into flames. One seemed to have been turned to stone. Some had been apparently turned into alien animals that promptly choked on the ship's atmosphere. Unfortunately, the attacking creature, which presumably breathed the same air, didn't. Now, the alien had him trapped. Commander Jim's huge fleet of massive, fully automated production ships had reached the planet three of its 11-month-long years before. They had fusion-bombed most of the major population centers, dropped down drones that sprayed the entire place with huge amounts of defoliants then landed attack robots that slaughtered the surviving natives and animals. The natives might have used the animals as food. Huge factories were set up. The planet was strip mined. The pollution caused the seas to turn into a toxic stew. The air became a poisonous smog. Here and there stood a few stone ruins bathed in acid rain. One of the planet's moons was an Earth-like, unpeopled paradise. When Jim arrived, he planned to set up shop there. Hopefully, with his willing help, all his girls would be pregnant by the end of a Terran year. None of it was legal, nor was the pest control operation even strictly necessary. It broke all the Planetary Confederacy's conventions. The natives were sentient, small, green, furred bipeds with four arms and long pointed ears. At best, some had reached a tech level comparable to 15th century Europe. It wasn't politically correct, but because the natives were mammalian, pro-mammal prejudice would mean that if he got found out, he and the girls would spend the rest of their lives in jail. Fortunately, the system was so remote there was little danger. He would sell what the factories made on the underground market and make billions in adjusted credits. He was already rich, having inherited his money from his pops. Commander Jim and his wives had arrived a few Earth months before. A major civilization center had been deliberately left partially intact. For R&R, he and the girls donned environment suits that were also power armor. As one of them put it, they then did an old-fashioned, descended to the planet's surface, heavily armed, and massacred the natives by hand. The girls had looked spectacular in their battle kits. They were all like-minded people. Jim was old-fashioned and believed married people should have similar interests. That had been an Earth month ago. They had been about to get into a shuttlecraft and go to the planet's moon when the alien had appeared, literally in a puff of smoke. 
The thing had been horribly emaciated, its fur mangy looking, and in places its skin looked burned. It wore the remains of a black robe, covered in what looked like stars and Babylonian crescent moons. A pointed black hat decorated the same. It held what looked like a small stick. All hell had broken loose. Now square-jawed, six-foot-tall Commander Jim cowered on the floor of the storage room before all three feeble, swaying, obviously dying, but unstoppable feet of it. When it spoke, its voice wasn't even remotely human, but Commander Jim could understand every rage, hate, sorrow-filled word. Cursed demon! Foul monster! Why, when you had all the stars, did they cover our poor huts? Why didst you murder the world? I am Hawk's Castle, last time wizard of Clan Thuman Creel, of the city of flowers blooming under the cliffs. But flower blooming is no more. A blasted waste, rained on by rain that is now the essence of vitriol. The children who laughed and danced on market days, who were content and clapped at a few paltry spells, are all dead. They died of hunger because you did cause the crops to wither and the beasts to die. You, bastard that you are, hid behind the sky and did rain devastation down upon us. It happened so fast, my brother mages and I could do but not. My own dear wife, a powerful witch of the healing art is dead! She starved! We had passed beyond the storms of male and femaleness together and would come to the time of friendship. I have striven and forced myself to stay alive, to bring vengeance upon you, monster! Now it shall fall upon you, for good and all. With my left hands I bring it. A special spell. An old story grand dames used to tell the children. A creature from our myths will you become. It has two heads. It tries to eat itself. The wizard raised his wand. Commander Jim began to scream. 